doop, do 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 It's the stream music. Do 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 do. It's the stream music. Do 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 do. It's the stream music. Do 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 do. It's the stream music. Hi, how's everybody tonight? We're still waiting on my co-host. Uh, he said he should be popping by shortly. Um, but uh, we're gonna see. He's not known for his punctuality or or his ability to uh, work new technologies, which is which is funny considering his day job. Who's in the chat? Uh, Floydian, Charles Ashworth, uh, Andrew Sparrell, good to see you. Greg T. Stag, I believe that's a new name. Hello, greetings, good to see you. Uh, Nicholas Britt, yes, this is a semi-serious stream anyway. Uh, John Gunsel, yes, we are going to get rotten. Mark Goings on, Jeremy Sims, Jeffrey Patrones, James Britcher, uh, Caleb Blagg, and Nathan Clark. All right, I think that's everyone who's in right now. Let me know what everybody's drinking. I'm always interested to hear what everyone is imbibing tonight. Um, so... <laughs> Patrick says the stream's just starting. We need to build the anticipation. Um, yeah. Well, it, it, I was thinking it might be semi-serious, but we're gonna find out together. Um, so yeah, uh, Erica is not gonna be joining us tonight. Erica had uh, an obscene amount of work to do today. She is, it's their spring promotion at the bank, and she's having to do it all from home because we're on stay-at-home orders. So she's not gonna be joining us, unfortunately. Um, she has had a crazy day dealing with a lot of loans and crap. Uh, Caleb Blagg is on the edition number four. I actually have some edition number three right here we may get into later, depending on how things go. Um, oh, Last of the Mirador for Mark Goings On, dang. That'll be a sad one to finish off. Uh, Nicholas Burt is on Lone Rider Deadwood Casks. I don't know that one. That sounds fun, though. Uh, James Bridger's on AD Law's Armagnac finish. I haven't had that one. Have had a lot of AD Law stuff. We actually need to do an AD Law's like review at some point. We did the wheat whiskey a while ago, but we got this sample pack now, and I figure we should go through and drink all of them. Uh, Steve A is on the Glendronic because of, co of course he is. <laughs> Steve A is the most prolific collector of Glendronic I know. Um, oh, Lone Rider is a local North Carolina distillery. Oh, neat. Um, I know, I think, I've had a few things from down there. I'm trying to remember what I've had. Uh, the new, the new, the South Rye Revival, New South Rye Revival. Who's that by? I'm trying to remember who that one was. High Wire. I think they're out of Charleston. Yeah, love this stuff. This stuff's fucking awesome. Oh, are we past five minutes? Nope. Nope. Uh, Steve says he only he only has the nine. I thought you had more than that. I thought you. I feel like you definitely brought more than nine to our. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the post party at at a. Uh, it's still America. Um, yeah, you should go. You should go visit them. They're fun. They're nice. We didn't actually get to go on the tour when we were there. We got there very late in the day, but we were able to do the tasting. Me and Erica when we were in Colorado, we were running. We hit like six or seven distilleries over the course of one day. Um, so yeah, yeah. We, uh, we didn't get to do the full AD Laws experience, unfortunately, but yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna get this train wreck a-rolling, as we do. Hopefully, hey, look at that. Speak of the devil. Hey! <laughs> Sorry about that. I was having a little trouble with my mask. Um, <laughs> gonna put a damper. Sure you... It's going to put a little damper on the drinking, but, you know, hey. <laughs> I'm not sure you need it right now. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think you're going to catch it on the stream. This is the first time I've actually seen you, like, kind of face-to-face -face in a month. Yeah. 
Yeah. Before when we stopped out at Easter and dropped off your bed. Oh, no. I did see you at Easter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. For those of you for those of you who don't remember, this is this is Mike, my father. <laughs> All right. Hi everyone. <laughs> All four of you. No, we we've got we've got like 15 in the chat right now. Not too bad. Not too bad. Cool, cool, cool. Um I think I saw Andrew Page was drinking the Brook Laddie Isla Barley 2011. So that's that's a right. good, good voice. He says he doesn't have any Highland Biles right now. That's okay. That's okay. We're see, okay. So Pop. Yeah. The reason I wanted to drink Highland whiskey tonight was was that we never drink Highland whiskey on this show. Ever? Bring, almost, like we do occasionally, but like almost, almost never. Define Highland for me. Okay, so so when we're talking about Highland, right? We're talking about the area, like so. There's the Lowlands, yeah, and then there's the Highland line running from what is the the Firth of Clyde west across the country, and that's the Highlands. Except that there's also Speyside, right, which is within the area of the Highlands. So and... that's that's the area in the northern tip of Scotland around the River Spey. So we I've got some Speyside stuff here too. Yeah, I was going to drag up some space head, but I haven't drunk this Glenfiddich 18 in a while, so. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I actually, uh, I'm going to start with some good stuff and just get worse as the night goes on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm drinking, I realize I have a ton of sample bottles of Highland stuff. This is actually Glenn Grant, 30-year-old. Ooh. Yeah. So this was from... Um, this was from uh, uh, the Scotch Whiskey Calendar, Advent Calendar, um, the, what is that, Secret Spirits? You, you remember them, Jonathan oh, and yeah. Cindy Bray? Yeah. They're actually in jail now. Oh, they were. I think they, I think they posted bail. <laughs> I got to do something about this, Claire. Give me a second. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah, Steve, a, I did say Speyside counts too. Um, the funny thing is, technically, the islands count as Highland as well. Geographically, the islands are part of the Highland region. Oh, well, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the glare might have been preferable. Drinking in the dark. I like it. Hold on. Um, Let's see what I can do about that. Yeah. But, and then the, the weird thing is, the weird thing with the Highlands is that Aberdeenshire and Banffshire geographically are part of the lowlands, but they're actually... Uh, uh, for purposes of whiskey making, they're considered part of the Highlands. So go figure. Um, yeah, but no one really considers the Islands uh, Highland whiskey because the style is so different. Well, that's Nicholas just Burt lost about six hundred on that deal. Oh no! How did that happen? Nicholas Burt saying he lost six hundred dollars when the the Braves went to went to jail. Wow! Oh, yeah. Uh, did you pay them and then you didn't get your money back? Or did you just drop $600 in the street somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they are back in Canada. I think they have a GoFundMe if you want to support their legal fund. I won't be. <laughs> but, you know, you do what you want to do. Right. Um, all right. But you're on the what, – which Glenfiddich are you on? Uh, the 18-year-old. Okay. I actually have a 19 year old here. I'll break out right after, right after that. Yeah, this was, um, this was the one in double oak casks. I think one was a sherry and one was, hmm. I think the one, yeah, the one was refill and the one was sherry. Cause yeah. that was the, that was the 1990s edition. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the old school one where it's still body bot, uh, bottled at 43% rather than 40. Correct. Hmm. Oh, Steve says you should move a foot to your right, or like six inches to your right. I think you're off center slightly. Is that, um, is that annoying, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate, hate to annoy Steve. You know, it's all yeah. about Steve. Uh, Nicholas Bird saying his, oh, his calendars were confiscated by the Idaho police, the Idaho State Police, when they, when they busted the Braves, because they had all their stuff in a storage locker. And they were selling it illegally out of the storage locker, and they got caught. It's like bootlegging yeah. out of your truck. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. That really does suck. Uh, oh, one. there's a bright light behind your head. That's why they're saying. Yeah, block yeah, it. On. yeah, block it with your head. Block it with your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew Page saying he's got the Highland Park 12 and cast strength rock oyster. But yeah, technically, technically islands are highlands, but people don't really consider them that because they are so different. I was considering breaking out some Highland Park, but I love Highland Park. We always drink Highland Park on this show. So I was thinking we should uh, do some other stuff real quick. Uh, uh, hey, Wheels is in. Um, Donald Rance. Donald Rance is in. Patrick Fulmer's in too. Good to see you. Um, Floyd saying the stream is picky. Just be glad Mike showed up. I mean, no, we wanna. We don't want to be blinding you guys. We'll, we'll get this right. The old man's doing an ad hoc, an ad hoc stream setup because he's he's at home. So, yeah. Uh, oh, that looks better. Maybe. Ah. Hey, I almost look lifelike. Yeah, yeah. You're not quite as quite as shitty. Yeah. Well. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Um. Okay, but yeah, I'm on this this Glenn Grant. Have, did I let you try any of this? I'll have to send some to you or, or drop some off at the house. Yeah, not that I remember. This is a weird one. This is a super weird one. Glenn Grant isn't a distillery you see like do bottlings of their own. So this is an A.D. Rattree bottling. It's like drinking sherry mixed with peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird one. <laughs> It's 30 years old. It's I'm pretty sure it was when like refill sherry, but it's weirdly nutty, but also super, super sherry. I don't know. It's a weird one. Hey, Emily Chambers. Uh, Floyd is asking, is there a scotch that pairs well with soft tacos? I've been trying to find one that goes with pistachios. With pistachios? <laughs> what, what have you figured out? What's your? What's I your... haven't come across one yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. Um, ah. Tacos? Are we assuming beef? Are, are we assuming these are beef? Uh, beef tacos? Because, like, I mean, you can always you can always go hard bag with anything meaty. I feel like. Right, Emily's asking the same thing. What is the uh, what is the kind of meat and tacos? Okay. John Gunsel, Glen Kinty with uh, peanut brittle. I don't know if I have any in the house. I know I was thinking of picking up a bottle, but yeah. <laughs> well, we could always do that as a stream. Do a bunch of really weird food, food pairings. Yeah, yeah. Great. yeah. What goes with PBJ? PB and J, couldn't you just just do screwball? Just pour screwball on a piece of toast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Mm. Okay, Eddie, I got a comment. The last time I saw you was Sunday. And for those of you who have seen his previous streams, you can let me know whether he's changed clothes or not, because I don't think he has. <laughs> <laughs> What is this like three weeks now? <laughs> no, no, no. I I definitely was not wearing this particular sweater when I saw you. Although that is true that I I, I have I've been mostly pair, wearing one pair of sweatpants uh, uh, and I'm just washing it and putting them back on. <laughs> yeah, I think most of America is doing the same. I know, I know. Well, that's the thing. I'm I'm hoping I might be able to pick up some work at the liquor store pretty soon um because they're still open um but yeah which is surprising to me but you know i guess wisconsin alcohol yeah you can't do without yeah especially coming out of winter like we did yeah um well and especially because the thing that they were really worried about is that we were going to have a bunch of alcohol dependent people swarming the hospitals all having the dts right when we were trying to get people in for coronavirus and so they wanted to to make sure uh, make sure that didn't happen, so people could keep getting their medicine. Sure. Yeah. 
Um, Donald is heading out. Good to see you, Donald. Thank you, Senpai. You need to get on stream with Donald Rance. That man is an Irish whiskey machine. <laughs> he's he's incredible. Yeah. Uh, oh, Nathan, Nathan Clark, you need to you need to be quiet. Don't don't tell him these things. I don't think he can see the chat right now. No. <laughs> you can open up the chat if you. Yeah, that means I'd have to put my glasses on and actually <laughs> read. I think I saw someone saying in the chat that they really like the Glenn Grant batch proof. I haven't had that one. I think this is the only Glenn Grant I've had. There we go. I want it. You do have quite a few people on here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's a good good night. Good night for sitting home and drinking. Isn't oh, that right? Wow. Any night. Yeah. Any, <laughs> any day. Any work day. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, Patrick Cohen is talking about how he's from Iowa and he would come over to Wisconsin in high school because it, we were allowed to buy liquor a year earlier here. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you telling me stories about that back in the day. Oh yeah, when we were when we were at 17, 18, yeah, it was not too hard to do. <laughs> well, and because you would let all the kids into the bar, like the underage kids into the bar with you. Oh yeah. And if, and if the well, cops showed up, all the older kids would block and all the other kids, <laughs> the young kids would run out the back. Yeah, no, there's a lot of that going on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I learned to drink and drive on the same night, so you know, that's Wisconsin. <laughs> you know, we've told enough dumb me stories on this channel. I feel like we need more dumb dad stories. Oh, I'm having trouble with the audio. <laughs> <laughs> me dumb? No, neither. No. This guy, my father, my father. Sober once paddled a picnic table down the Milwaukee River. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, then we got an $80 ticket apiece for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Trev Wilson, our fearless moderator, our second fearless moderator, the Robin to Steve A's Did Batman. You peerless, cheerless, or fearless? <laughs> <laughs> All three, man. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. Hmm. How's that Glenn Finnick treating you? I know we did a review on that a while back. You know, it, it's, it's got that apple taste, but it's it's a sour apple. I don't remember it being quite like this. Really? And again, we compared it to new and old. You had right. a bottle 18 that was the newer version. Right. And I think I remember that one. And now I'm going back to this. And yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I do think that's relatively common i mean i don't i don't get apple as much with a lot of space side highland stuff as i do with some irish stuff but i do think those light fruity notes especially especially in un very lightly sherried highland stuff you do get that like kind of orchard fruit sourness sometimes no yeah. uh, it's got a touch of caramel it's not bad you know it's drinkable that's kind of i'm gonna pour i'm gonna pour myself a little glenfiddich there you go um as long as we're talking about it um this is actually a gift from ben eves who i don't know if this is, if he's in the chat right now but thank you ben we we love you and appreciate you but uh this is glenfiddich age of discovery 19 year old madeira cask oh yeah so I mean, we call it the age of discovery. Everyone in Asia and, Amer and the uh, Native Americans call it that age when all the white folks showed up and stole our shit. <laughs> yeah, I think that's continued through today. Yeah. <laughs> you look at what the current administration is doing with oh, drugs no. and supplies. and. You know. I should have opened the political bag. We're going to get a bunch of angry oh, comments. Sorry, got to go again. <laughs> Um, no, but yeah, so this is the Madeira finish. I've been getting into Madeira, Madeira finishes lately. Mostly Kilhoman. Kilhoman Madeira finish. But, I mean, no one's surprised by that. Uh. 
you know, here's the thing about this. You know how you were saying, like, I'm pretty sure the old, the 90s Glenfiddich 18 was also cherry finished. Yep. Right? That's what that's what we were saying. I don't yeah, know. I mean, you, I mean, you pick that up. It's there. There's not... I guess Glenfiddich goes for a very middle of the road kind of kind of distillate. They go for a very easygoing, you know, everyone can like this kind of thing. But there's not that much Madeira on the the nose on this one. It's not a bad nose. It's not a bad smelling nose at all. Um, but it's just like. It has like those little, those little bumpy fruity notes that pop out at you a little bit, just here and there. You know what I mean? Like sure. just enough that you notice them, but not enough to be like over, over exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This one kind of sits on the tip of your tongue, and it's, yeah, it's tasty. Hmm. Not, not my favorite. Yeah, this one's interesting. You know, like it, it reminds me of like a Hessian sack, like really, like uh, what's what's that that braided material um, that they make like sandbags out of or something? Oh, burlap. Burlap. It, it reminds me a little bit of wet burlap on the taste. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing. It's not bad. It's not bad. I think it it reminds me a little bit of a port finish because some port finishes get really musty. Uh oh, Mark Goings on says they have a Madeira finish on the Kilhoman store. I did not know that. Um uh, oh, and Nathan's saying Spex has a Barbados rum single barrel. We actually have a little bit of that. Me and Erica drank it on stream a little while ago. That's excellent. I'll I'll send that along to you too, Pop. Yeah, I'm gonna need a, about a cup of that actually. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it would go good in a yellow cake. I know, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, I only have a tiny little sample, though. Mm. See, Brad saying wet burlap, is that good or not? I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I guess, I guess it's wet burlap, but with a little bit of fruity red fruit. And some like cinnamon, which which is interesting. It's weird, but it's not bad. It's it's just not not what I was exactly what I was expecting. I'm gonna try and damp this light down just a little bit. Oh, I think it's okay. Well, you know, it's all for Steve. Oh, you hear that, Steve? <sighs> You hear that? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I don't I don't see much of a difference. No. <laughs> uh, Andrew is saying he likes me and Erica's Kill Homan reviews. He, we persuade we persuade him to buy the Sauterns cask. Yeah, I love the Sauterns cask. I really I want more people, especially people who do peated stuff, to start doing Sauterns cask finishes. Um gotta get that sweet and peat. Um, what have you been drinking lately, Pop? Uh, not a whole lot. Kind of cleaned out the liquor cabinets, so I had to actually hit the basement stash. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's getting desperate over there. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I feel bad. I feel, I've got all this whiskey over here. I could bring some over. Uh, no. <laughs> disinfecting time alone although you could use some of it to do that yeah you really could i was thinking i still have some wyoming <laughs> this is the last of our wyoming single barrel if, if you guys have been watching the channel for a minute um you know you know what that's about and for those of you who don't be happy you don't know uh, John Gunsel says, open the cabinet doors. See if that helps. The problem oh, is yeah. you're behind you. Brilliant. Yeah, I should have moved this to a different area. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't work. No, no, no. I'll uh, work on this for next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, everybody. Just be glad you get to have the old man here. For what it's worth, yeah. Sorry, Steve sorry says move that. to the right again. Just move to the right. Close the doors, move to the right. We're going to get this right by the end of the stream, you guys. We're going to get this right by the end of the stream. Now it kind of looks like you have a halo. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> well Nimbus, an aura I have. Uh, uh, happens every time I drink. Tell you what, let me shift, and we'll try this again. That'll allow me to grab a couple of other things that might be good. Okay. You can work on that. I'm, I'm going to keep pouring myself tiny little pours. I'm trying not to get too sloshed. I do have to get on a stream after this. We're doing cast strength after dark. So make sure you guys come come join come join us for that. I, trust me, shit's going to get weird. Um, as long as we are talking Highland stuff. I'm going to break up some Klein Leash. I assume most oh. people know the history of Klein. Well, some of the history of Klein Leash. Um, Klein Leash is the the new version of Brora since like 1967. But um, what you may not know about Klein Leash is that its existence is uh, directly tied to ethnic cleansing. Fun fact. How does that work? It was actually a result of the Highland clearances that Klein Leash came into being. Um, the Marquess of Sutherland. Uh, so Gaelic people have generally been treated really shitty in Britain. Uh, um, yeah. And um, over overall. And so the, the Gaelic population in Scotland um, was basically like the like the English didn't want them to use their own language. They didn't want them to do all this shit. Blah blah blah. And the English started getting these clan leaders together, and they were like, "Hey, you guys have to come down to London and hang out with us, and we're going to get you anglicized." And so these these Scottish clan leaders, these Gaelic clan leaders, went down to Britain. They started getting or England. They started getting anglicized, and the English started whispering in their ear, like, "Hey." If you kick out all those Gaelic people out of Northern Scotland, right? You guys can make a bunch of money by starting farms instead of letting them herd. So basically all the Gales in Northern Scotland got forced out of the country. And the Marquess of Sutherland was like, well, as long as I've got the space, now that all those fucking Gales are gone, I'm just going to start a distillery. <laughs> And that's so, how they started Clyde Leash. So civilization comes to Scotland. <laughs> yes, but this is the this is the GOT Clyde Leash. This is the Game of Thrones version. Um, so I love this one so much. I just I just opened a new bottle. I've been hanging on to this one. It's beautiful and I love it. Yeah. Do you remember this one? I think I do, yeah. It's that it's that interesting like sea air and peach mixture. Yeah. Yeah. I actually told some people at a local whiskey club that this was my favorite of the Game of Thrones one. And they uh they said, Oh Eddie, no, why? And I was like, it's fucking good. <laughs> it's fucking really good. Well, that would be an interesting question to our gallery, which was the favorite of theirs from the Game of Thrones collection. Mm. We blew through a bunch, and some were okay. Some there. Yeah, yeah. What were you, what were your guys' favorites? I'm actually really curious. But what were the what were the bad ones? Um, because Talisker was good. Talisker was good. Like a villain um, was good. Yeah, what was the uh, Johnny Walker, White Walker? Oh, was yeah. That, that was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Refrigerated, evaporated. 
not drunk any way you took that it was bad. <laughs> mm. All that stuff was so bad. That stuff was so bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steve A is saying he agrees. Klein Leash was the star. Uh, Oban and Talisker, Lagavulin were good. Uh, Greg T. Stagg is saying he really loved the Talisker. I've got a bottle um, of that. Bro. Saying Talisker. Oh, Cardu, Cardu and Dalwini were mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And here, actually, we can get kind of to the point of this video a little bit because, like, a lot of the uh, if when you when it comes to Highland whiskey, there's so many different Highland whiskeys. And if you include Speyside, like Speyside has the most distilleries per capita. Well, except for Isla. Isla is a whole different thing. They've got the ton of distilleries, but um. Like, I feel like with a Highland whiskey, you have to do something distinctive or else it just tastes like another slightly caramely butterscotch fruity whiskey. True. You know? Like, I think uh, I think that's why I love, like, I like Glenfiddich. I have the sign. I have the sign right here. Where is it? The, right behind your neck. There it goes, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love Glenfiddich, but, like, a lot of their releases all end up tasting the same. Like and it's it's a fine taste, but like unless you do something super weird with it, like fire and cane, it, it doesn't it's not very distinctive. Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody loves fire and cane. Oh, uh Steve A is saying that Glenn Doolin was mediocre too. That was House Tully. That was the one with the big fish on it. Right. I remember that one just tasting like apple. Like, I'm going to be right back. Hang on. <laughs> do, you, do you have some? I think nope. I do. Okay, he might have some. Uh, yeah, I don't think Glenn Doolin, Doolin was very okay. And that was like the cheapest of the bunch, though. So, like, I mean, I guess not to make excuses for it, but at least if you paid for that, you weren't excessively disappointed. At least you weren't having to kick out $80, $90. God damn it, I love this Klein Leash, though. And actually, I did have a chance to try some uh, Brora from, I think it was 15-year-old Brora, so it would have been bottled in, like, the mid-80s, I think. I think that's how the math works on that one. Um, it's very good. It's really good. I tried it at a whiskey head meeting here in Wisconsin or here in uh, Milwaukee. But the thing is, I don't think those those kind of things can ever live up to your expectations because you go into it thinking like this is going to be the most magical thing in the world. And then it's like. Yeah. Um, Nathan is asking, what's the difference between this and the 14? This one's much younger for one thing. Um, this one is actually in its non age statement. And also the proof sire, 51.2. You found it? No. <laughs> um, the Game of Thrones one I have left is the Cardu. Um, Oh, Caleb, that's why you were talking about Lafroy Select. Got it. Yeah, no, we were talking about the GOT stuff because I was drinking some of this. What are you drinking, Pop? Game of Thrones Cardew. Oh, you got the Cardew. That, was, the card. that was House Targaryen, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another, that was another like mediocre Highland release in this series. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I feel like some of their Highland releases in this series were just kind of, cr well, oh yeah, Steve is saying that the Royal Loch Nagar was um, just branding. But the Klein Leash is younger, higher ABV, Lagavulin is nine. The Talisker was a different blend, and I believe it was also younger. I don't remember. Olden was very, very similar to Little Bay, but I do believe it was somehow different. Yeah. 
and Cardi was just a basic rebranding. Yeah. I just remember that. Well, you tell me. How does that one taste? Because I, I have a very specific memory of that in my head. There's nothing special about it. It's pretty sour, actually. Really? Sour? Yeah, well, unless my taste and smell is gone, which means I might be. <laughs> like, is it that? Yeah, it's. Hmm. Oh, hey, Ben Demon Hunter's in here. He just had the lag nine about a week ago. That was a good one. That was an excellent one. Is it like that astringent malt sour that you get from some Highland stuff, or is it? it did that it, is, it is astringent. There's there's some oaky notes. It's not not much though. Yeah. Um, nothing nothing to write home about. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of true of a lot of a lot of base Highland expressions. Is that unless you did something, unless you aged it a really long time, or Fuck Do with it. Special with it, yeah. Yeah, which is probably why we don't drink it on here. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm used to the worst whiskey watch Wednesdays. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And I haven't done one of them forever. You should be thanking. You should be thanking COVID for not making you come over here and drink bad whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, I don't know. What was your favorite of the GOT collection? The Telescope was good. Hmm. I think that was probably my favorite. See, I really, if if it hadn't been for the Klein Leash, the bag of one would have taken it from me, for sure. Um, but yeah, the Klein Leash blew everything else out of the water. Okay, folks, I'm going to give you a choice of what I drink next. I've got Nakdu, nine-year-old, uh, Ink Murin, 21-year-old, or let's see. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Uh, oh, I got Balmenic. Balmenic 13. What am I drinking, stream? Tell me. Andrew Page is saying uh, he was he was turned off by the GOT packaging on the Lag Nine. I don't know. I really really liked Lagavulin like Nine. So, uh, what are we saying? Well, we've got a vote for Ink Mirren, and we've got a vote for the Belmenak. So, next one, next one, next couple. We'll see. We'll give it a minute. Um, I really like younger space. I mean, uh, younger Isla's. That's kind of my thing. I want, I want really young Isla. I, I think the worst thing you can do to an Isla is age it unnecessarily. That's why I'm so excited. Did you hear about Wee Beastie, the new art bag that's coming out? No. It's five years old. I've been quarantined with a lot to do. Oh yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Actually, I've been working every day. One of those essential businesses. Yeah, no, you actually have to go and do stuff. Yeah, and it's been crazy. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, you know, I don't mind the temperature scans, but the rectal search is just for <laughs> <laughs> It seems unnecessary. Yeah, the guys with the uh, class rings. Oof. <laughs> Um, yeah, we always end up talking about Isla. Even on a Highland stream, we end up talking about Isla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we're we're for for that. That. Okay, we've got a couple votes for mixing them. I really like that. I really like the idea of mixing them. Um, so I might, I'm going to do that. I'm going to blend them. Well, so Ink Mirren. Do me a favor. The Ink Mirren is the 21-year-old. 
do me a favor. Yeah. Taste just a little bit of each one and then blend them. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. Oh, this cap is on, it is stuck on there tight. The, the question always is, is the combination of, you know, a good bad make a, a middled, or can you make two bads make a good kind of? Right. Is it better than the sum of its parts? Yes. Right. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this bottle open first. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do the knock do. Is this little, this, I don't know what happened to this little guy. Sugar must have evaporated on it or something. Uh, Nathan Clark is asking if I'm excited for the Wee Beastie. Yes. Uh, he was curious if it would be similar vetting to the 10. I don't know. I mean, it shouldn't be, I mean, it shouldn't be excessively different, but um, it's, I'm hoping for a lot more smoke. We want smoke. Gotta have that smoke. Oh, yeah. Can't get enough of that. Yeah. That barrel notes. Right, right. I think that's something. I haven't had enough Texas whiskey lately. I haven't had enough, like, really tannic, wood spicy Texas whiskey lately. Yeah, they make some great stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, Balcones is going to be distributed in Wisconsin right after my birthday. Is that a hint? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Although it would probably be cheaper if I buy it for myself. Since sure. I get a discount at the liquor store. Because if I come in and I buy it and take your discount, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just going to sip this out of the bottle. Well, I'll pour myself a little. So this is the Ink Murin. This is the 21. That is super taffy. Like saltwater taffy. Saltwater taffy and like cotton. It's like a fair. It's like the state fair. But again, there's that interesting astringent, astringent, like kind of bittersweet note that you were talking about before with the cardu. Yeah. Even on this, there's a little bit of that. Like this is way older, so I don't. There's not as much, but I do think Highland malts tend to have a little bit of that, just touch of astringency. Yeah, it is super light. Let's see what this was aged in. Sherry Hogshead. So it was used once. They repackaged it, used it again. Yeah. Yeah. There's not. There's like no sherry flavor on this actually. If if that bottle didn't say sherry, I don't know if I would have I would have guessed that was that was sherry. And this one's actually refill bourbon, so we're not going to get a lot of oak notes on either of these. Any, you know, any of, the, any of the bourbon sweetness on that? Yeah, a little bit. It, it, but it's it's just like a touch of caramel. Like it's just a touch of caramel. Like it's not like first fill bourbon where you get like vanilla and tropical fruits. It's just kind of like the dregs, the, the little itty bitty bit left. The in that Let's, I'm gonna make a little blend here. You know, and the reason I have all these Highland whiskeys is because of like, I don't buy Highland whiskey usually unless, uh, except for when I bought this calendar. And I feel like I understand why people were maybe a touch disappointed with it just because it was a lot, it was a lot of refill Highland malts. And even though they were like uh, uh, older, like even an older malt in a refill barrel is not gonna get that same amount of flavor as a good barrel. Sure. Yeah. Even if you let it sit forever, it's going to pick up the bad stuff as well as the good stuff. So at that point, there's probably more bad stuff you're picking up. <laughs> well, I wonder about that. Like when we're talking about refill barrels, right? Like you've you've you're not getting that much filtration out of it. It's not you're not getting much wood notes. Are you at some point? Just, I mean, are you letting it oxidize too much and you are going to start getting off notes in there because it's sitting so long? 
Like if you're not using active wood? I would think, but I don't know the science behind it. So let's ask Mr. Wizard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but that's a, I don't know. That's, that's an interesting thought. I don't think, I don't know if that's how it works at all, but anybody out there know. Yeah. I mean, it's a valid point and it's, it sounds like it would be correct. Right. Well, cause you have a lot, I mean, then again, you do have really old grain whiskey that sits in refill barrels for years and tastes pretty good when it comes out. So it's not like you're necessary. Like, I feel like an off barrel doesn't necessarily have to do with how long the whiskey's been sitting in it, but maybe the quality of the wood when it first started. Yeah, because different oaks, I mean, obviously, you know, the Oregon oaks, the Wisconsin oaks versus, you know, what you get down in Japan, they all have vastly different flavors. Oh, for sure. So, and also, depending on how the wood was treated, correct. it was kiln dried, it was air dried. Um, but yeah, at some point, at some point, how much, how much chemicaliness is attributed to the oak rather than the distillate itself? I, I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a Cooper. We would have to ask, we'd have to ask uh, uh, Whiskey Wise, your, your best friend, um, Mr. Weddle. Oh yeah, yeah, Mitch. Yeah, yeah. I actually like this blend a lot better than either of them on their own. <laughs> uh, both of these on their own were a little, a little one note. This one, the Belmenac was the Belmenac was nice and sweet. It was very caramely. Um, but it didn't have a lot else going for it. This this kind of astringent, bittersweet ink murin, though, this is this actually kind of leveled it off a little bit. I still don't think it's a great whiskey, but it's not it's not terrible. Caleb, oh, we're we're just talking about if if refill barrels lend themselves to off notes in distillate. If letting stuff sit in refill barrels could have an adverse effect on the whiskey inside. Especially with time. Right. Especially with time. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I think, especially with like grain whiskey, my opinion is like a lot of people say they only drink grain whiskey if it's been aged like 20 plus years. My opinion is give me a young grain whiskey that's been aged in a decent barrel like Teeling. Teeling does theirs in what? Bourbon and wine? Wine barrels? Like I love that shit. Like I'll take a young grain whiskey any day if you gave me some good some good fucking barrel in there. Um. Hmm. You still on the, uh, are you still on the car, I'm flipping between and I, the, the difference is quite apparent. Is it really? Oh yeah. Like, so. like in what way? Well, if I gra grab the Glen Fittich, Dick. Dick. it's a little light, a little appley, got a hint of caramel, sherry note, and I come over to the Cardew. It's a heavier flavor, but it's 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 yeah it's a bit sour yeah um, more so than the glenfiddich oh yeah very much so uh oh charles is doing the baines double matured first fill bourbon that's the uh south african one right um nathan Cl oh nathan clark's dropping some knowledge in the chat this is actually really interesting. So he's saying it's common for uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey S Society to recast whiskeys if they feel like they're off. That makes sense. Um, it's also common in the Scotch world to use grain whiskey to mellow a bourbon cask for a year or two before they fill it with malt. That I did not know. That's wow. actually really interesting. See, for me, I would rather they just put it in the really hot cask um like that like i'd rather they they take that motherfucking bourbon 
bourbon cask wet like Kill Homan does. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm mentioning Kill Homan again. I know I'm a Kill Homan fucking fanboy, but um, because I know they bring they bring barrels over whole rather than splitting them up, so that way they can bring them in wet and put the Kill Homan straight in there. So, uh, which would make quite a bit of difference, I would think. Mm-hmm. Because you don't have to saturate the barrel, right? No. Right. Well, and I mean, it's also it it costs more in shipping, but then you can you don't have weird wood shrinkage, or you know, you don't have like barrels dry out and and get weird. And I do hate wood shrinkage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Andrew Page is asking about Glen Goyne. Let's break out some Glen Goyne. I got some right here. This is actually a wee sample that Erica brought back from Scotland when she was over there. Um, this is actually just the 10, but she she grabbed it while she was she was over that way. So let's let's break some of this out. Um, now I noticed you got that out of the barrel, Eddie. I did get this out of the barrel. Yeah, I mean the, the barrel is like bottom shelf for you, if I remember right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Erica hates this one. Ah, uh, okay. Erica <laughs> despises Glen Coyne, <laughs> and that's why it's in the barrel. Um, Patrick Fulmer. Yeah, so we were actually we were actually at a at a tasting with one of the uh, Willis family here in here in Milwaukee. He was talking about uh, the Kilhoman process for bringing over barrels. And apparently, yeah, when they, when you have a, when you bring a barrel over to Scotland from America, like a, a bourbon barrel, usually they split it into parts and then it dries out a little bit on the way over. And then they recraft it into a hogshead when it gets to Scotland. Um, but what he was saying is that by leaving them intact and leaving them wet, that way there's no warpage on the way over and you can use the barrel as is and how it was when um, the bourbon was in it. So, yeah, I don't know if they shrink exactly, but I guess there's a drying out process that happens when you split them up. So. Uh, oh, oh, Nathan Clark. Do you see, do you see his comment pop? <laughs> yes. Isn't that cute? Oh, he's gonna be a dad. No, that's great. Oh my god, that's so sweet. It is his first kid. His son arrives in June. Oh, congratulations, dude. Just in time for when we retire. They yeah, exactly. Retire. You you guys can take over. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um. All right. Oh, Andrew Page is saying he he loves the Glen Goyne. He wishes he had some right now. He just finished a bottle of 21. Oh, that his wife gave him for his birthday last year. Oh, that's nice of her. Wow. Oh. Okay, here's the thing about Glen Goyne. This is a funky motherfucker, especially for a Highland. This is a funky motherfucker. Like... You get some green apple, you get some toffiness, you get some caramel like you do with other Highland whiskeys, right? Um, but there's also, a, you know that Hessian sack note we were talking about before, like a burlap sack that we were talking about that? It's like that, except you dialed that motherfucker up and poured brown sugar over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Like I can see, I can see why Erica doesn't like this because that it's got a weird. I don't actually know if Glen Goyne is peated. Someone who knows, let me know if Glen Goyne is peated. Because no, it's not peated. It's dried by air. Okay, it says right on the bottle, not peated at all, which is weird because if you if you had told me this was lightly peated, I would have believed you because it reminds me a little bit. Not as bad, but it reminds me a little bit of the uh, Central Standard Scotch style level of peat. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. That one was that one was awful. That one was terrible. Wow. 
Yeah, no, I can see why Erica would not like that one. Though. Yeah, but it's on the nose. On the taste, this is great. It's it's it reminds me of um, cinnamon toast crunch, but you put strawberries in the milk. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> John Gunsel decided, do I go around licking tasting odd things? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as a kid, everything went in his mouth. I was going to make a joke there. Usually, I would make that joke, but you're my dad. Yeah. So I'm avoiding saying any sexual jokes while you're on stream. I, and I do appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bow out for the last five minutes. You can you know, <laughs> off your chest and out of the way. No, no, no. That's what that's what uh, Cast Strength After Dark is for. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Floyd is saying damning with faint praise there. Yeah, the nose isn't my thing, man. I gotta say, the nose isn't my thing. It's not bad. It's a little funky in a weird way. That There's some funk that is good, though. We've had funky whiskeys that are good. There's good funk. You know what I mean? Name one. Uh... I'm mean, going to think of the weird, you know, peanut butter flavor, the deep chocolate one. Uh, yeah, but I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about like that funky, like, it's like kind of like an old cheese kind of funk. Oh, okay. Like Octomore 7.3. Do you remember that one? Yes. Yeah, we, we had it at your, we had it at your, your uh, vow renew renewals. Yep. yep yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that kind of funk, that kind of funk is good, but. Then there's, it's, a, there's, it's not a bad funk. It's, it's not a bad funk, right? It's right. like kind of like it's like people who like blue cheese, you know. People Some people like really cheese. like blue cheese. Nathan Clark says, "Why the hell do you think guys think I taste lead paint in Jameson? Jameson base base bottle Jameson does have a metallic note." Yeah. Is it an iodiny? No, it's not iodiny though. It's not an iodiny I, note. I don't remember. Then again, I don't do Jameson straight, so. Yeah. But like, but like, there's a metallic, there's a metallic tinge to base the base Jameson product. I swear, I swear to God. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Page, Springbank. Yes, Springbank Farmyard Funk is good. <laughs> That's true. Or or Springbank mixed with uh, like a sherry finished Springbank. I know because when we were at uh, when we were down Texas, who had that? I think it was Scott from was it Scott from the Dummies? Don't remember. He had a fifteen year old Springbank that was done with uh, sherry. And it had like taken a turn and he hated it. He absolutely hated it. I fucking loved it. It tasted like it tasted like fried eggs and uh and hay. <laughs> oh yes, funk, like the sample uh Jesse. Jesse from Still It brought that uh sample he had distilled to La Quinta. That one was like you know, that was a funky ass beer. Like it's like a funky ass sour beer. Yeah. All right. My opinion, Glenn Goyne, very okay. There's some stuff I'm not I'm not big on, but it's very okay. Hide it back in the barrel. Going back in the barrel. <laughs> not to be seen for another like eight months, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think who was it? Was it Andrew who was saying how much he loved Glenn Goyne? I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's not my thing. Well, you know, in another month and a half, you'll be digging into the barrel for anything you got. I know. I know. It's true. It's true. All right. But I think we got to call it a night, Bob, because um, the Cast Strength boys are about to hop on with Cast Strength After Dark. What is the After Dark? I promised I, promise I would make an, uh, uh, an appearance on. Dad, you're not allowed to watch it. Okay. Is everyone in PJs or what's the deal? 
We're going to be wearing something. <laughs> You're not allowed to watch it is the point. Don't you dare. Don't you dare come just, out. Just a thong as a chin strap. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. I appreciate seeing everybody. Uh, this was good. I was. I really enjoyed talking with you, Pop. Yeah, I'll have to get caught back up because uh, it's been a while. Yeah, and I'll come. I'll come one of these days. I'll come drop off some samples for you. That way, that way you can. We can have. We can actually. Oh, you know what we could do? We could have a blind stream. We could have all the same samples. We could see who can guess how many. How many right? <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. But until next time, everybody, thank you so much for coming. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out, okay? Don't forget to do that. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that, too. And until next time, everybody out there. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Got to finish the stream as is tradition. Everybody out there, stay rotten. <laughs>